I needed to protect a nest cavity that northern flickers built in my backyard. I couldn't find pre-made cone baffles that would work for me, so I built my own. Now, I built mine for my tree, but the same designs are usable for posts, poles, or whatever your situation may be. Check out my video on protecting flicker nests and feeders and how this cone baffle is part of this very effective solution. If you missed the link in this video, check out my YouTube channel and go to UnchartedDIY.com where you'll find details, materials lists, and links to resources, including a link to the great cone calc software. So when I made my cone baffle, I ended up having to do some pretty intense math in order to figure out the diameter of the top, diameter of the bottom, the angles involved, and then create a flat sheet pattern. It's not something I would recommend unless you really enjoy that kind of math, and I don't. So I found a better solution, pretty slick software here. It is i-logic.com and if you go there and go to utilities menu you can see cone calc and cone calc 3d and it runs on windows mac ios and android cone calc is a completely free program to use this software it's very simple you enter the diameter of a which in this case is the bottom and i know that that is going to be 27 inches and the diameter of the top where it actually attaches to the tree in my case is going to be 12 and I want the height to be 14. When I hit calculate it's going to show me a flat pattern. Now in order to do a cone this size in a single piece it would need to be 57 inches wide and almost 28 inches tall. The Y is the height, the X is the width. I don't have any sheet metal that size, uh, nor do I think I could even get any. So you can click on half cone and then calculate again and check that out. Now the width drops to under 40 and the height is 19 and a quarter. That will definitely fit on the 20 inch piece. Now because this is a half cone and I know I've got two segments to work with, I'm going to add a half inch overlap and calculate again and now I get my final measurements. So once you have your result like this, you can print out a single sheet and it's gonna give you basically what's on this page. If you are able to scale this up to make your template from, this is all that you need. Now, if you want to be able to print an actual life-size template that you can then trace onto the metal, you can use Cone Calc 3D. This is the version that costs $25 if you choose to purchase it, but you get 30 full functional uses out of this software. And you can do unlimited cones in each use. It's just after 30, you need to pay for it, which is a pretty good deal if you're going to be doing a bunch of cones, but 30 should be plenty for figuring out a cone baffle for your tree. Now, this software is a little bit different in that you put the diameter in the top, 12 inches, bottom diameter 27, and height 14. Now when you click calculate, you see you get an actual 3D view of it. So you can see what kind of an angle that you've got. And then you can click and drag to look at it from different points of view. And this way, you can see exactly what the angle is going to look like ahead of time and you can try out different angles. So if we want, only want it to be 4 inches, what is that going to look like? much flatter cone. Probably not a very effective cone, but you can experiment until you get the height that you want. And then the other advantage of this one is that when you get the flat sheets, if it doesn't fit on your actual metal, instead of just half a cone, you can print as many segments as you need. So as you can see, you got eight segments. I'm sure you can continue going up but you need to attach all these together. So obviously the fewer, the better. And then once you've determined your proper pattern and you get this laid out, then you can go to the print menu and save flat pattern as PDF. And the instructions here on the site show you exactly what you do from there. And it prints out multiple sheets and gives you the exact life size pattern that you can just trace right onto your metal. Very cool software and it saves a great deal of time. Once you've laid out your roll material and you mark your pattern on there, 
for the size of cone that you're going to make, you need to cut these edges. The straight edges we're going to do with the blade and the curved edges we're going to do with the snips. Now remember, you can see here, probably in the reflection, the cut on there isn't super smooth. So that's okay because we're going to end up putting little slits in here and then folding these over, which will get rid of any of that wavy edge and get rid of this incredible sharpness. It also stiffens the whole edge of the material as well. Okay, well this is scrap material. I've already made the cones and it's out mounted on the tree. But I can show you exactly how this gets cut and assembled. So when you go to cut it, if you're going to make straight cuts, you can do it with just a sharp utility knife. And you want a really good thick piece of metal to run this against. I'm using a framing square, which happens to be perfect. You could also use wood and things, but this way the blade won't catch on the wood. So you also want to make sure that as you're cutting this, you cut with the scrap piece that you're going to throw away on this side of the straight edge so that if you make a mistake, it won't score into the rest of the piece that you actually intend to use. So you don't, you're not trying to cut through this with the blade. All you want to do is score it several times. So I'm not pressing super hard. Again, I'm not trying to go through it. And this is why I say you want to do this on straight pieces. Because this would be nearly impossible to get the same line a few times on a curved piece. Once that's scored, you can take that score and fold it over like this. And you can hear it when I do that. It is snapping right off. There we go. So that creates a pretty nice clean edge. Again though, <laughs> this is so sharp. Be really careful with it. So anyway, that is how you create straight edges. When you want to do the curved edge like this portion here, that's where you need to use snips. So these work kind of like scissors. And you just cut straight through. Now you can see though, as I cut, it's leaving kind of a, a rough edge there. You see how it's got wrinkles in it. It doesn't create as smooth of a cut as you can with a straight edge. Now, if that's a problem, you can take your rubber mallet and just kind of flatten those out. And now you get a nice clean edge. So to cut this curved edge here and to be able to fold it into a smooth edge, we need to slice it. An easy way to do that is with these snips. And I just take a couple inch long piece like this. I cut about a half inch, maybe five eighths of an inch into it like that. And then you can take and just fold this up. If you want to be precise, you can use your straight edge and your blade to kind of pick up under there and just fold it up. Once you get the blade under there, you can take your fingers and just push it over the straight edge like that. And you can do the next one and so on all the way across the edge. When you're done with that, you just want to take your rubber mallet. It doesn't take a lot of strength to do this. Just kind of tap it down. you see, not only do you get a nice folded edge there, but it really strengthens the edge of this. So once the whole thing is assembled, it's, it's reasonably strong. Strong enough for a squirrel to land on it and not be able to deform it. Now, as far as attaching pieces together, since I had to do this with two different cutouts like this, there's several ways you can do this. I happen to use a riveting tool where I just drilled some holes in there and then put rivets in them. You could also use sheet metal screws. So as you overlap pieces like this, you could just put sheet metal screws right through there. Again, you'd want to fold this edge, 
I fold all visible edges. By the time this gets folded over, the one under it gets folded over, and then you're putting screws through it or rivets. It's a nice stiff seam. So for this collar area where it actually is gonna mount onto the tree, what we wanna do is create little tabs that can then fold up and be attached directly to the tree as you see in this picture here. So what you do is just take and then make about an inch to an inch and a half long cut about every, I did it about every inch to inch and a half, something like that. And then the edges get folded over just like all the other edges and tap down with the hammer. That's not always easy to tell what the diameter of the tree is. So if you're off in your calculations with this, even if you get it all done and it doesn't really seem to fit on the tree, you can just cut the, them deeper, which is what I ended up needing to do on my tree. So you can see my cuts are a little bit deeper than I told you to go. I just needed to cut them a little bit deeper so I could fold them out a little bit more and just increase the diameter where it mounts to the tree. So that's pretty much it. This is easy stuff to work with. Once you're done with it, you might just want to take some Windex or some 409 or something. Give it a little clean so it gets all the fingerprints, any oils off of it before you spray paint it. I spray painted mine after I had it assembled on the tree and attached to the tree. But you really can do it ahead of time if that makes things easier for you. If you've enjoyed this how-to video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And also check out UnchartedDIY.com where you'll find further information and more detailed how-to projects.